Hello and welcome to the show. Well, I have my dear friend Amber's back. Amber's back. Amber Salon Sustainability. I'm not going to tell you the story again. If you want to know the story, go back to the first time I had Amber on the show. But this had to happen. Why, you ask? Because I watched Jamie Sullivan do a live stream yesterday, which was Sunday, of her dyeing her own hair. Oh my God. Amber, say hello. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having me, Sharon. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. So Amber, this is real, what's going on right now. And Amber knows me, so she knows I'm not gonna bullshit any of you. So Amber, I'm texting her, right? I don't even know what time it was. This was the morning, right? I'm like, you gotta jump, I'm tagging you on this live stream. You gotta jump on this live stream. Because this woman, Jamie, who I follow, who I think is awesome, you know, she's, you know, I'm from New York, so I get the whole, like, she's a real straight shooter. So she's dyeing her hair in the bathroom. And she keeps saying, it smells like a fart in here. Amber, why did it smell like a fart? Because there's some sort of ammonia or ammonia derivative off-gassing. Yeah. Okay, well, that was number Rotten one. Eggs. The first thing that scared me was that she kept saying it smelled like a fart. And then the second thing was, she's like, oh, it's burning. It's like, it's burning. So I'm like tagging the hell out of Amber. I'm like, you have to help this woman. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many things wrong with what was happening. And I'm so glad that you watched it because now I want you to tell the audience what was wrong. But before we do, I wanted to show you guys this wonderful product that I'm using called Natural Leaks Everyday Conditioner. And this is something I bought. And I was going to ask Amber about it on real time on this video because I know this isn't perfect for my hair. She did not recommend this for me. You know, I went on the website without getting her consultation because I, I don't need help. <laughs> and I bought this and then I'm like, well, I think I need something a little stronger because I have very thick hair. And although it's working and I feel like my hair is healthier than it's ever been because I'm using your products. Right. I know it's not the right one. So what is the right one for me? You need probably a moisture conditioner or the intensive hair mask. The everyday conditioner is more for people who wash every day, um, lighter hair, great for men, great for kids. It's so funny because as soon as I saw everyday conditioner, I'm like, you idiot, Sharon, that's not for you. Because I don't wash my hair every day. And my, I have such thick yeah. hair that I'm like, I feel like I could use the whole bottle in one, right? right? Okay, so next, Sharon's like, Oh, Rob, he got a nice present for you. Yeah, that's right. Well, Rob doesn't have any hair. Cooper. There you go, Cooper. <laughs> Cooper will now be using a scalp, but it feel good. <laughs> yes, so he will be so happy to get this. Or you know what, my mom's going to watch. And she oh, watch. Fair I can enough. almost hear her going, what about me? Yeah, yeah. Mom, you're getting it. All right, so Amber, tell everybody what, just just tell them. Tell them what you thought about everything that you saw yesterday on the live stream with Jamie Sullivan. Oh, goodness. Um, so she, she was commenting about covering her, her six gray hairs, and she was using um, a mail order permanent color box that came with some permanent hair color and then um, a gloss hair color application also. And it was kind of, you know, three inches down and smeared everywhere and burning her eyes and irritating her skin. Um, <laughs> it was bad. It was really hard to watch, right? You were right. So, Amber was texting me. <laughs> this is really hard to watch. And I'm like, I know. If it's hard for me to watch only based on what you've taught me about all the toxins that we're putting, oh my God, I was like, this has to be killing you. So go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. No, just, um, the breathing, she was talking about the smell, the burning. I'm like, open your window, <laughs> open your bathroom window, get yeah. some air, stop breathing that. Um, but I think that it's probably common right now. I mean, a lot of people are probably out there, right? The shelves are empty with hair color. People are out there coloring their own hair right now. So I understand that, um, I mean, she did a great live for a representation of, okay, what this really is like and that it is hard. It wasn't easy. She did. Have a lot of questions wasn't sure how to put it on um it, de it definitely showed 
Um, I loved how she kept thanking the stylist, like how important your job is, that mm -hmm. this is why you go to a professional because if you're not good at doing this, you need yeah. a professional. I mean, just look, I picked out the wrong flipping conditioner. Right. <laughs> and I could have asked you, I just, I didn't want to bother you. But I just think that it is so, it was so good that she was showing that that's why you get a license. That's it. it. That's it. Yeah. And you know, it's not that um, your hair, your stylist, your hairdresser, whatever, your cosmetologist, whatever title, your salon professional, they're not going to be replaced by people discovering that they can dye their own roots or cover their own gray hair, right? Right. Because I, I'm telling you, nobody does my hair better than my hairstylist. Of course. You know, and the people will be mad, right? If I, when I say this, but, but it Who is. Who cares? <laughs> Okay, it's, uh, tell them the it, truth. This is a truth show. Real talk with Sharon. Go ahead. I mean, if you're just if you have built your career as a cosmetologist just covering gray hairs, to in my opinion, then that's a job, not a skill. Mm -hmm. And we go to school to develop a skill and a craft. You know, so if you're not highlighting and balayaging and picking up your scissors and doing cuts and connecting with your client in an artistic fashion and you're just painting on root color to cover gray hair, well, the, anybody can do that. Yes. That's why there's a huge multi-billion dollar market for boxed hair color and why women everywhere have never gone to a salon for hair color because it is that easy. Right. So nobody should be worrying about that right now. Just if people wanna color their own hair, I think that it would be best if they've never done it before, they need to consult or know what they're doing and avoid the waste, the toxins and the ruining of the hair in the process, because that will cost a pretty penny when you go back to your stylist. And so tell me, tell me this, you said something interesting um, about Jamie in particular, that she had, she had only pulled out like three or four gray hairs. And you immediately said something that I would never know of course she's going to go dye her hair like the human that's not the stylist is just like this is what i should do i should dye my hair no you said what amber but she had two tubes she had two options she had dye and she had a gloss she could have okay. just taken the gloss and put the gloss all over her head and it would have been a multi-dimensional not oxidative permanent dye and it would have covered her six gray hairs or whatnot balanced out with her highlights i mean there was this all of this professional talk of you know leave the ends out don't do this don't do this emulsify blah 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 and and then when i realized she had a tube of gloss that um basically would just coat the outside of the hair and give her a semi-permanent solution to get rid of the grays, blend it in, there would have been no red, and it and she would have gotten through until she needed to do the next step. Mm. But instead, did the whole dyeing thing and then was going to do the gloss on top of that. Well, that's just definite overkill and unnecessary and um okay, questions. Yeah. Questions from the humans. Okay. So you have dark hair and you have a few grays you should not dye your hair you should ask for gloss when you go get your hair done at your stylist next time or when you're doing it at home okay so that just depends on if your a gloss is not going to give you a solid opaque like disappearance of gray hair but it is going to give you a very good blending and camouflaging of it Gotcha. Also not permanent, you know, but it, so for now, to me, that's a great solution because you're covering and blending and giving yourself the ability to get to your salon when you need to versus when you go permanent oxidative hair dye, you are lifting, putting out tones, going into a world, right? Which is what she did. Um, and she exposed a bunch of red yes all right so this is the doctor whisperer show so everybody don't be alarmed we're going to talk about healthcare, 
and we're going to talk about the business of medicine. Well, if this is a shit show of healthcare, I don't know what is. Okay, so not everybody knows like I know now because Amber has taught me so much about all the toxins and oh my God, this is why everything was burning. But also, um, so all of the stain that was around her head, right? And what everybody was saying in the comments. Talk about that a little bit. Just different ways to remove the hair stain, the hair color staining and using um, different oils or alcohols or, I mean, there's a lot of different um, opinions on how to get that off, but you could just use a color that doesn't do that. And, and you wouldn't have to rub something else into your skin to take hair dye out. So then there's that. <laughs> that okay so we're gonna get to that and um okay then the leftover so one of the big questions that jamie had that i was so fascinated because uh, here's what the human not the stylist would think okay i have i've just bought all this dye but i'm not going to use all of it or i just bought all this gloss i'm not going to use all of it so i'm just gonna you know cap it i don't know i'm gonna wrap some tin foil around the top of it and i'm gonna put it away in my closet and then i'm gonna use it again so amber as a professional stylist, sustainability product pusher of good products that you are, tell everybody what that's about. Is that a good idea? No, once it's open and oxygen touches it, she comments at one point about, oh, it's how it's changing colors. That was like- She said it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's done, that's it, it's done. So she probably had like half the bottle remaining still it's that's it it's trash at that point but she was under the impression that she should keep using it this is a metal straw everybody just so you know this is not plastic straw i'm talking to amber salon sustainability what do you think i'm an idiot <laughs> i know i love that cup um yeah she did she did think that she could save it maybe that for later she was commenting about how she had a lot left and so she could maybe just save it but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything at that point it's done so this is something that if you're not a hairstylist or a salon professional whatever the heck we're calling everybody you're professionals you would say oh duh like no you got to get rid of that right okay so let's talk about all of the leftover stuff then that she had and what she was going to do with it and then what was going to happen this is depressing for me. Go ahead, Amber. Give it Which to real raw. Give it to her. Dump it down the drain. She's just going to dump it. It's just, what else are you going to do with it? And then what happens? Right. Rinse what it happens? out. Go down the drain. It goes to the ocean. And what happens in the ocean, Amber? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. It affects the ecosystem big time. Okay. So this is. All of these things, not one time in my life ever crossed my mind. Okay, I will admit it first. I will embarrass myself first. I never would have ever thought of any of that stuff. You know how much product I've poured down the drain? That's true. So at salons that are not using eco-friendly products, they are actually affecting our oceans, which are affecting our fishies. So yes, all the plastic, we've all seen it on 60 Minutes and all the stuff that we're doing to pollute the ocean, but so are everybody that is pouring stuff into the drain. And we always mention that Nemo yeah. line. All drains lead to the ocean. Yeah. So when you realize this, well, you always knew because um, Amber, if you didn't watch the last one, you would know that she owned organic salons that were that are local here in Tampa Bay and had always had organic products. But then you met Naturally. So let's talk about why you have this wonderful Amber Salon Sustainability today and why you only offer these products and work with salon owners. So I had a dream or a vision that I was going to have these organic salons everywhere and, you know, change the world and people's mindsets um, by owning all of these salons. But that was not an easy path to take. And when I could instead help to 
get products and educate other salon owners, I could have a larger impact faster. And I partnered with Naturalique specifically because what they stand for as a company, their level of integrity, um, their family owned, their, their values, their morals. There are many certifications, just the fact that they clean the oceans while they're making their products. They have a zero forestry impact. They use, produce their products with wind energy. They do not, their boxes, everything are made with, um, rock paper, they don't use paper made from trees. We actually rebuild forestry by donating money from retail sales. Um, I'm gonna put everybody in my bag, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. So all of those um, proceeds are going to Australia. We were helping to rebuild forestry there after the wildfires. Mm -hmm. We um, have a 360 bio cert. We are or certified organic USDA. I, there, I could go on and on, but the biggest thing that made me start the Amber Salon Sustainability, the advocacy and really want to get this to as many salons as possible is that we've made a commitment to combat climate change in 10 years through these 17 different initiatives. But the biggest one is about health and wellness. And it's not just the health and wellness of the client, it's the health and wellness of the technician or the salon professional. And if we are able to have salons just think about one client a day, we literally can make a global impact against climate change. And that's huge for me. So that was it. It was like a tipping point in my life mm. that I was, how can I scream this from the rooftops mm -hmm. and impact as many people as possible? So I called Sharon. <laughs> good job all right so i just decided that i want to make this a two-parter so watch this this is part one okay well welcome to part two everybody this time i didn't even change my clothes wearing the same clothes as i was in part one so i have amber here again we're going to talk about how these chemicals and toxins that are at these salons that we're going to not only are affecting, let's be real, the customer, me, but more so the hair technician. So Amber, let's piss some people off today. Let's do it together. Let's just say, this is a pandemic, people. We don't have time for this niceness anymore. We want to help people. That's the whole goal of this show, of what you're doing, Amber, is we want to help people. So when you want to help people, you have to be bold enough and have enough courage to say the truth. So Amber, I'm right here for you to back you up, sister. Come on at me. Why did you do Where this? do you want me to start? <laughs> no. where, wherever it hurts you the most, that's where. Okay, so um, let's start with the fact that, okay, so I used to be a business analyst, right? Mm -hmm. I left a job as a corporate business analyst to become a cosmetologist. This was my dream job, you know, to be a cosmetologist, to open a salon. And then I watched um, MSNBC did a, a show about lymphoma and hair color. And I remember sitting there watching the show going, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Like I left my, my corporate job, my stability, and now I've put myself at risk lymphoma. So that led me to researching, researching, and trying to figure out alternative ways to stay in my dream job, but not put myself um, exposed to all these toxins. So it led me on a journey of organic hair color and natural products. Um, there are studies that are, you know, there's a Danish study that says a cosmetologist, the maximum they can work in the industry is seven years before they develop some form of allergy or Conversion to to being in the work environment. So between the skin conditions, the breathing, the you know issues with having babies, having having baby production. Baby. Yes, all of these things, and they're all related to your job or your your career that you have chosen. Nobody enters it with that mindset that it's a short term thing. It's it's not 
we don't understand that as um, salon professionals. Okay. But I do think that after all of this, people's minds are shifting a little bit. Okay, so let's let's be clear. So I have always been, um, as the doctor whisperer, Eastern Western medicine. Okay, I I believe in science. And I also believe in alternatives. I believe more in collaborative medicine than I believe in anything else. We sure. all need doctors, we all need them to save our lives, especially right now. Like, can sure. we be more grateful for our healthcare professionals? But the problem is that we're not always well informed, right? So I always say that you have to ask the questions as a consumer, as a patient of your doctor, you have to interview, now, now I feel like you have to interview your stylist, the salon owner, because if this is true, Amber, because I'm going to just assume that there is some data behind what you're talking about. So I don't need specific numbers. I just want to ease the minds of all of the, what I've always heard in the industry, well, where is the science that backs that up? And how do we know this isn't just another one of those earth green moms that, you know, takes crystals and, and turns them into fairy dust? Fair enough. Thank you. So tell them about that. <sighs> um, breath. Good. I love taking a breath. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I have spent a lot of time learning and educating myself. My clients have educated me. It's taken me the journey um, further than I ever expected, but um, in 2008, I was at an international hair show and took a course on, you know, how to green your salon, and I thought it was an amazing class, and people were laughing and getting up and leaving. It was the, they were so rude to the instructor, and at, by the end, there were only four people left sitting there, mm. and all of the information that was provided about ingredients, about um, sustainable energy, what to do with your tools. I implemented all of that stuff in the salon and stand by it and believe in it. It drove my success. But I think that clients and salon professionals alike, they all focus on the end results, not the journey. And the journey is really what is more important because what are you doing to get to the end result? What are you using? What are you breathing? What's happening to you? Um, the end result might be this beautiful, you know, Instagram worthy photo, you know, with thousands of likes or whatnot, but um, what did it take to get there? And were you able to, how many times are you going to do it and sacrifice your health or mm -hmm. the health of the people around you to achieve that? Um, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Because, you know, listen, I have been very guilty and ignorant of a lot of things. And I said this on our last um, show together that it was only until 2020 that I started taking, you know, recyclable bags to the, the grocery store. Sure. I used to be like, oh, just, you know, everybody else is bringing plastic home. They're giving me plastic at the stores. I, you know, I'll just take the plastic. It's also good for a poop bag for Charlie Brown, right? So, and then you start hearing all of this and it's like, okay, like my friend David Hull says, who's the futurist, like, um, we can't save the planet, you know? So stop saying save the planet. We all have to do one thing at a time. We have to take one step. And if it's, Right now, where so many people that are salon professionals, salon owners, it's like having this horrible pandemic around us, but to force us to start thinking about what we're doing is how I, you know, interpret it. I don't interpret Absolutely. it, right? Don't you feel that this is an opportunity and also a great way to separate yourself. So tell everybody about, so what you do now is, it's like you're empowering stylus that's how i see it well absolutely because if you can take control of your environment and you can help your clientele to be healthier while you're being healthier and you're creating a sustainable salon environment that's not going to affect their immune systems because they're not breathing in these 
chemicals that are tearing them down for the two hours that they sit in your chair, but rather, you know, using products with antioxidants and there's no toxic fumes and things that are occurring naturally in our ecosystem, you know, then they're not hurting themselves by being in a salon. And certainly you're not hurting yourself by being at work every day. Hmm. So, so what, what should people be asking their, their stylist? Cause I'll, I'll tell you, um, let's tell you a secret. I was just talking to a doctor the other day and, um, I was talking about you and what you do. Yeah. And he was like, he's like, Oh, he goes, well, that's interesting. I ask my stylist to use organic products when he does my hair. And I said, well, that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. But there's a choice. Like, so organic for you because you asked for it, doctor. And not organic for everybody else. Oh, so what? It, like, how does that make you feel when you hear that? So I would say, did you look at the product? Did you check the label? Because a lot of stylists don't even know what truly makes a product organic. Yeah. Oh no, I have like an right. organic olive in it, like an organic olive one, because mm -hmm. then you can put the word organic on a product. So, I mean, is it just about that or is it about the product and the mission and the company as a whole? Are they truly, you know, the real deal? Right. You know what I mean? Yes. And then why would a stylist or a salon owner not offer an option for better? Charge more, you know, yeah. it's going to cost more, so charge more. But why it's have more to be healthy? Leave? Yeah, it's, it's, it's what I tell everybody, you know, um, my mom, which, you know, she said she found out how much one of the products were that you have. I mean, this is real talk with the doctors. Yeah, there is no other. And she was like, ooh, she's like, well, that's kind of expensive. And I go, yeah, so it's expensive to stay alive. Because it's true. You know, it's expensive to eat healthier foods. It's expensive to shop at Whole Foods versus Public sure. or Trader Joe's versus, sure. so yes, it is. But and it's not like that everywhere. In some countries you go that this is the norm. So supply and demand. So if more people demand it and we can, you know, change the. Look at the price of gas right now, people. Yeah, fair enough. yeah, yeah. I mean, cosmetics follows the food industry very closely. So as more people are shopping at Whole Foods or more people are, you know, going to organic grocers, then it will come, but why not make it happen faster? It doesn't need to be this leisurely journey. Like, yeah, let's go, but take responsibility. <laughs> oh, we're tired of it. I'll tell you what, we don't want to jump on uh, Facebook live anymore with Jamie Sullivan and start making comments, hoping that she doesn't, because not only she's doing that in the bathroom, right? With all those toxins, guess who's going to use the bathroom after that? The kids. Sure. Or maybe the kids. Sure. Are I have autoimmune disease. I had terrible repercussions from two childbirths. I fight all kinds of different skin disorders. And why? Probably because I, when I grew up, I dreamt of being a hairdresser. And so now my body's battling that effect. So I, because I wasn't able to, I wasn't organic my whole journey. You know what I mean? I started out in the same old world everybody does, but my body couldn't handle it for very long. And I would go home every night with a migraine and throw up all mm -hmm. the time. And then my skin would crack and bleed all over and my hands were disgusting. So I had to make a change, but I bet there's a lot of people taking a deep breath right now listening to that. I know a lot of hairdressers that have really suffered. And um, I don't think that they're, you know, the connecting of the dots. Right. But maybe we can help them connect the dots. And that's, that's it. It's really all we want to do. So look, connect the dots. Go to Amber Salon Sustainability. Find out about these incredible products. I'm using them. I love them. I my I really do feel like my hair is a lot healthier. It do, it does help too that I haven't put a hair dryer or a flat iron to this bad boy in a while either. Oh yeah. And I would wear hats every day. 
if they didn't look so ridiculous on the big coconut head. But Amber, thank you. I think thank that's you for having me always. But I, I think that your bravery, I don't, it's not popular, okay? What I'm saying, what Amber's saying, it's not popular. But nothing good comes out of people just speaking to what the masses want to hear. You know, the people that make changes in the world are the people that are brave enough to put all the finances and popularity aside and just do the right thing. So I would like to thank you for doing the right thing. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. More people can do it. You can do it. And you can make money doing it. So sure. do it. Amber knows all these great ways. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about quitting Dr. Whispering and just you know, you know, working for Amber. Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right.